Spring practice all concluded, wrapped up in Tallahassee, Florida State football. We get our talk from Logan Robinson from Knoll Game Day, and uh, we want to get you set for uh, all the positions across the board, offense and defense, before fall camp. Logan, how are we doing today? Doing fantastic, Mark. Got to see some football in person inside Doe Campbell Stadium, uh, and you know what? The quarterbacks looked pretty nice. We actually might have a competition. Some young wide receivers showed out, which we're about to talk about here in a second. A lot, a lot to kind of be happy about. There's still some things maybe concerned, but uh, overall, it was nice being back inside Doe Campbell for an actual football game. Fans in the stands, beer everywhere, regular Tallahassee. It was, it was a good time. Nice, nice. You know, I was looking at this wide receiver position, and when you think about it, a lot has changed in a year. When we were sitting here this time last year going into the 2020 season, we were thinking Tamori and Terry's primed to have just an outstanding season, be an all-ACC performer. He catches 23 passes. He's gone after five games. He's out of here. Uh, mm -hmm. Guys like uh, Isaiah Bolden and DJ Matthews transferred out. DJ Matthews looked like he was going to have a nice career at Florida State. He took off, and and it was really between the quarterback position, the offensive line, and the wide receiver position, uh, a situation where I'm looking at these numbers. They went from 65% completion percentage the year before just to 53%. Their yards per game went down like 90 yards in the air from season to season, so just not the type of passing game you need out of Florida State. It was extremely disappointing. That whole unit really was, I wouldn't say – won't be so harsh and say underachieved, but it was a disappointment. The production was weak. Uh, it kind of goes with not having a solid um, foundation at quarterback there. You know, Jordan Travis was the third option at quarterback. Tate Rodemaker ended up being the second string, not even Chubba Purdy. And as we know, of course, James Blackman was a starter last year. So I think the quarterback situation affected this unit quite a bit. Uh, the offense was more surrounded about uh, Jordan Travis getting out of the pocket and you know maybe not relying so much on an offensive line or not relying on his reads as much and getting to his wide receivers. So I think that dwindled down a little bit. And there was also some, some mistakes uh, by the wide receivers and having drops and wide open touchdowns there that didn't uh, result in six points. So um, I, I think that unit right now is trying to hit a whole 180, and this has been a focus for Dillingham and also, of course, Mike Norvell. You know, this offense is here for playmakers, um, and they're trying to get uh, more surrounding the quarterback, even at the running back unit, but most certainly the wide receiver unit. They want to have playmakers that can be explosive out of nowhere. Mike Norvell likes to run very fast uh, paced, ha run a very fast paced offense. We saw it moving really quickly during the spring game. Um, but he loves running a quick offense. And this is where these offensive players and the wide receivers can really get a knife on you real quick and score six points. But last year it was extremely disappointing. And to my own Terry was, was um, not healthy throughout it all. It was just overall a, a nasty year for them in that unit. Talking Florida State football, we got Logan Robinson on here from uh, Noel Game Day. You can catch him also on his podcast, uh, Hear the Spear. And, of course, every Wednesday night here at the Voice of College Football, we're talking to Florida State football live at 6 p.m. Eastern time. That spring game, it was pretty impressive to see guys like Malik McLean break out. He had some nice plays downfield. Brian Robinson did as well. And um, as we talked about before we started to record, uh, some, some of the veteran guys, the productive guys uh, in other programs, they still have yet to show up like Andrew Parchment uh, out of Kansas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the funny thing. So going back to the spring game, now that we get to note on it, we get to cheat a little bit. But the two freshmen with Burrell and McLean, they had a day. And this is something that didn't really surprise us, at least a few of us that got to go to those two scrimmages a few weeks ago. Malik McLean, at least him specifically, was in a majority of the snaps. We're talking about 90, 95% of the snaps during the whole scrimmages, both one and two, which is extremely impressive for a true freshman coming in there was some uh things going on where he arrived before uh the, the spring started and during tour of duty and a lot of people were maybe thinking inside the program if he was uh, fully set and ready to go and get out there on the field and he he proved everybody kind of wrong there and 
has shown out since. And I think Mike Norvell is very happy to have uh, McLean and stick with uh, sticking with the Knowles too during his late recruitment. And then Burrell, who looks like a young Anquan Bolden. I'm not just going to say that on the field, it's going to be that way, but at least for his physical statue, you can't say that that doesn't look like a young uh, Anquan Bolden. Uh, the cat is lift, lifting a ridiculous amount. He looks in fantastic shape and, not only, you know, you like to see those things going on during the off season and while they're lifting and such and look that way, but to play the part whenever you're out on the field is something different that you don't, you really get to see from true freshmen. We haven't seen it in a little while and for it to be two true freshmen that had an outstanding day is something to, uh, to be happy about. Florida state fans need to be happy about it. Definitely after just about four months ago, I think a lot of Florida state fans thought this unit was, just done obliterated might as well just get running backs and tight ends as your weapons but this wide receiver room is i think one of the most exciting parts heading into uh, fall camp that we'll be talking about the next couple of months and maybe the most talented guy is still in new orleans mm-hmm. destin hill so uh man everybody's excited about him yeah i can't i can't stop us i, I think i just instantly smile when we talk about destin hill because we haven't seen him and we're not going to see him until he and roles here in Florida state over later in the summer. And that dude is ridiculous. I did not only just, you know, I'll say it, but uh, Carlos is on our pod too. And he's watched film too. And, you know, it's just kind of unfair. And Florida state was really lucky to keep him on board and have Florida state uh, be his, his school to go to and through his college career. But that kid, that kid is very special. And I think both Burrell, we were talking about it before recording, um, Mark, but I think Burrell and McLean, you know, know those guys are on on behind them on their tail about to come in and enroll, and, and they wanted to impress really early, and you've got to be proud of them. I know Mike Norvell and Kenny Dillingham and Ron Dugans are very proud of McLean and Burrell uh, per- performing how they did this spring because Destin Hill, you've also got Andrew Parchment coming in too, probably two potential, at least one. I think solidified starter and then Destin Hill is going to jump in there and get a lot of playing time too this upcoming season. You can't keep him off the field overall. I mean, this wide receiver unit has gone from dookie last year to uh, maybe, maybe not so dookie. It's going to be, it's going to be actually really fun to watch these youngins. And, you know, like we said, we we're talking about two Mark, Milton and, and Jordan Travis had a solid day during that spring game. There, we saw some progression from Jordan Travis in the pocket and throwing the ball and had some nice touch. And then along with also Milton, who had an outstanding day. So the wide receiver room should be happy with what they got there behind the helm at quarterback. So when you look at these guys and what you know from Destin Hill, obviously just watching that on tape, you know, it's it's one thing to stack talent. All the big programs stack talent at all the positions, but it's another thing, let's say a wide receiver to have a variety of guys that can do different things so you can put them in different places like your your slot guys your your wide guys the guys that are going to high point the football and out physical guys downfield the guy that's going to get you your third and five your hunter renfro type you know are there do, do you see it when you look at body types when you look at speed levels uh when you look at ability just to freaking catch the ball <laughs> uh do you do you see you know, where they could be a complimentary unit together. Mm-hmm. I, I, there's still, you know, we talked about a few of these guys, mainly the younger ones, but there's still, you have veterans here like Keyshawn Helton, who usually is, is a, is a target that you can be your one first down, second down kind of guy. Um, you can usually count on him, even in big time catches and big time games. He's done this before, but sadly there was a little bit more of an inconsistency but he has that potential there. Uh, I just don't know how much we'll see of him with all this younger talent coming through in this wave that uh, that we have. Like, and you also have Ontario Wilson, uh, Jordan Young, who we the nickname for him is Abusement Park. But we're ready for the Abusement Park to open up. Um, it's not been seen for a little while. Uh, I did like his first scrimmage that he had that we got to see in person. I got to see him being a vocal leader, which is something that I thought was interesting for him because he's more of a quiet guy, but seeing him being vocal, talking to the offense, talking to the wide receiver unit, whenever they came off the field after a big play or t- after their, their touchdown drive and, you know, talking them up and dapping them up. I thought it was pretty interesting. So I think Jordan Young is really a guy that has a potential to 
really get a lot of playing time this upcoming season. And then one one more that's that comes out to me. There's three more left, but really Brian Robinson, you know, another guy that didn't get to see much of last year was actually got to have some playing time later on in the season, but in the spring game had a nice catch from Mackenzie Milton for a touchdown in the corner there. Didn't get to see him really that much at all during the two scrimmages. He was playing, yes, but didn't have a lot of targets thrown his way. Uh, that was the same way with during the last season too, near the end of it. Uh, Brian Robinson, I think, is someone that has the phys- physical attributes. I'd like to see him, uh, you know, step up and 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 he's got all the potential in the world. It's just got to got to give him some chances here. The nice thing about watching that play that he hooked up with Mackenzie Milton is there had to be some chemistry on that play. There was a lot of timing there because the ball was thrown to the pylon. He was running inside and cut, and it was to his back shoulder, and the timing was was perfect on that play. It was really well thrown and really just the placement, but he had to be ready for it to be on his back shoulder. Yeah, that was something as a young wide receiver you love to see. You know, he's watching his film, he's having good time, or he's he's putting in work after practices with Milton and Jordan Travis and whoever else, on understanding maybe where this quarterback likes to lay the ball in case you know you got a tight coverage on a on a DB. Uh, you like seeing that from a younger wide receiver. He's still a youngin, um, and just continuing to build chemistry with these quarterbacks, I think, is going to be key. And you know. We still got to go back and think Jordan Travis also didn't have a spring last year. There wasn't a lot of building time, building chemistry with these wide receivers, these tight ends, these running backs either. So this is really a growing unit overall between these two, the wide receivers and the quarterbacks. These guys are going to start learning more. And like I said, that ball used to be four yards short, at least when we were at the spring scrimmages from Milton to a Brian Robinson during the spring game, it worked out perfectly only where Brian Robinson could get it. He made a good play on the ball uh, and Milton threw a great ball into where he could get it. So uh, I really, I think really the chemistry building between these two units is, is going to be key for the next couple of months and in the fall camp, it's going to help a lot. It's going to help a lot. Logan Robinson's on the line here talking Florida State football with us uh, several times a week. We got him every Wednesday night at 6 o'clock Eastern time, so please join us for our Florida State Live show, and you can catch Logan on Noel Game Day and on Hear the Spear, his podcast. And when you mention Ontario Wilson, uh, he led the team in receptions with 30 last year, and what's funny is you just you just mentioned him at this point, and this could be the indication that the wide receiver position's just been upgraded significantly is that he leads the team in receivers at wide uh, receptions at wide receiver. Maybe a year later, he's got to bust his tail to get reps. Yeah, that is exactly the case because uh, there's too many youngins coming in. There's transfer. Got Andrew Parchment coming in. He's going to have to chase to get that second. Uh, consecutive year in a row and leading the team in receptions because I, for right, right now, I don't predict that on happening. I really don't uh, too many. T- there's just a different wave coming through. Uh, I think if Terry Wilson is skilled, I, he had a great spring, a uh, couple scrimmages when we were there to watch him played some, caught some really great balls. And I think he is going to be utilized a ton, but uh, right now I wouldn't be betting on him uh, being the leading receiver next season. Uh, it's, it's going to be a fun unit to watch heading into the camp. Good stuff from uh, Logan Robinson. Again, I hear the Spears podcast, and also you got to catch him right here on YouTube on Noel Game Day and NoelGameDay.com as well. Logan, we always appreciate it. Thank you, as always, Mark. Thank you.